unbelievable stuff. Welcome to Canada. It is a crazy upside down clown world. It's nuts. There's lots to get to. Let's get to it first. Joe Warmington is having a walk. He's having a walk through Clarence Square Park. I think there are two walks we're going to go through with Joe Warmington this morning. And this is in downtown Toronto. You can see classy stores and there's the LR. There's, is that an LRT? I didn't realize that Toronto had an LRT. Anyway, yeah, LRT. I think I did. Oh, that's like TTC. Yeah, they transferred it over, right? They used to be the streetcars and now it looks more like an LRT. That's a shame. That's a shame. The streetcars were cool. Uh, anyway, this is right in the heart of downtown Toronto, and this is what's going on. Tent cities galore, and that's not great. Here we go. You see, this is Clarence Square Park. It's on Spadina. You can see that... Well, there's a dog walking area over here. Very nice neighborhood. Lots of people live down in this area just a little bit south of Chinatown. You can see what we're dealing with now in the park here as we wind up 2023 and head into 2024. They talk about a housing crisis, but you can see right here in the heart of Toronto, you've got a lot of people living in here in these tents. I've seen this in other parks throughout the years. It's a very wet, mild kind of winter conditions over this Christmas, but you can see that a lot of the homeless and people that have come from other places have nowhere to stay. This is their life now in the city of Toronto. I hear some screaming in the back a little bit, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. You see the security here. You can see mostly peaceful. It's mostly peaceful. I hear some screaming in the back a little bit, but it's mostly quiet here. <laughs> sure. What a wild... What a wild thing to have happen. And the one of the things that I'm interested in here, it's like very muddy. And halfway through, you can see this pallet here. So that somebody's, and nobody's in it, which that's interesting. Is this their eating tent or something like that? But somebody's put their tent up on a pallet and the pallet is away from the mud, but all the rest of it is, is just kind of, it's a mud. It looks like a slum. You know, um, Oh, what's that movie? District 9? I think it's District 9. And District 9, the South, the South African slum, I can't remember I can't remember the name of it. Um, but the whole the whole city kind of looks like this, but it's a little bit more permanent structure, but not much more permanent than that. You know what I mean? Like they're thinking about, you know, mud, putting pallets down, things like that. So the, this is taking root and that's bad. Uh, this is again Clarence Square Park. Did we just look at Clarence Square Park? Okay, so this is the same video that Joe Warmington just posted. Um, and he says, other than the availability of drugs and free downtown living, there's nothing positive about these the latest encampment disaster, this time at Clarence Square Park in downtown Toronto. So yeah, that's true. Global News <clears throat> is reporting the need for safety and survival for those living in Halifax tent encampments. One person living in a front in front of City Hall calls the situation brutal. Yeah, yeah, man, you live in a tent in Canada in the wintertime. Like, wh yeah, it's going to be brutal. Holy smoke. Um, this is Global News says, the need for safety and survival for those living in Halifax tents. This was not a problem until Justin Trudeau opened the floodgates of mass immigration and drove up the price of the, the cost of living to a point where people are absolutely desperate and normalized camping on public property and allowed this as somehow equitable. It's a, it's a terrible idea. Anyway, a fire at the tent encampment at Halifax Grand Parade this month highlights the danger faced by those sleeping rough in the city. They're not, I mean, sleeping in a tent is not the same as being homeless. To a degree it is, but this is a, a quasi, it, it feels like a political protest, similar to the Palestinian protests, the pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas protests. Those feel staged, paid for, just like the Black Lives Matter protests. And I know the BLM protests, they infected everybody. Everybody, like somebody paid money to get the momentum started on that. And then everybody and their dog was BLM. All of a sudden, BLM was the thing. And then, I mean, Ukraine. And then it's so wild to watch everybody bandwagon junk jump so 
often and so fully, like they're so committed to it, right? But it's, it's really, really interesting to see all of these things gaining so much popularity. And this feels like that. There's a couple of pioneers who are testing out or doing the tent thing. And they're like, I don't have to pay taxes. I don't have to pay rent. It's just a tent and, you know, on public land and look at, look at whatever. And, you know, I'm sure they're YouTube videos, same as the YouTube videos advising people to scam food banks, right? So this is, it's not, it is not exactly what it's being presented as most things aren't in the mainstream media. Anyway, Boo Stewart, back to the article, who has experienced homelessness for the past few years, was among the three residents who narrowly escaped the flames. Today, Stewart says he's lucky to be alive, but admits he still heats his tent with propane. You got no other way to keep up the heat, the to heat up a tent, right? So what are you going to do? He says, so <laughs> fires are, are part of the danger of, you know, sleeping in tents on public property, <laughs> spitting distance from city hall. It's wild. Um, the, municipality, the municipality has distributed fire safety education brochures. That seems woefully inadequate. And signs to multiple encampments. But advocates, in case of fire, come this way, right? Fire exit, right? Like, yes, the tent has a fire exit. Um, oh, my gosh. So <laughs> advocate Matthew Grant says he doubts it will stop people from using propane heaters. Yeah, because none of those things address the core issue obviously. These people are in survival mode, he says. Hmm. The whole idea of having tents out in front of City Hall is untenable. And I think, again, it's part of the culture war ongoing that we're experiencing. Here's a minute on this. And it, it makes sense. Remember Occupy Wall Street? Remember how mad the Tea Party wars were? Here we go. Go track how many times the word racism was mentioned. And around 2012, it shoots up. Yep. Social justice shoots up. Transgenderism shoots up. White privilege shoots up. This was forced on the American people. Why are we having these conversations now? No, the people did not wake up one day and decide we want to have a national conversation about chicks with dicks. That didn't happen. This wasn't an organic movement. It was all of the most powerful people decided this is what we're going to talk about. And why was that? Look, when you're failing on policy, you pivot to a culture war. Yep. You pit people against yep. each other, so they're fighting each other. Yep. We had in this country, we had an Occupy Wall Street movement where leftists were standing outside of big banks screaming, we are the 99%. Right-wingers had a populist movement called the Tea Party, where yep. they were outraged about the bailouts of big banks, yep. unsustainable debt, government spending. They don't like that. That's not what the powers that be like. Look, they like you fighting about issues like abortion. Now, I'm not saying abortion isn't a very important issue. It's a very important issue. But the, us fighting about that issue doesn't scare anyone at the Federal Reserve. It doesn't scare anyone in the CIA. They don't care if you fight about that issue. They love you fighting over transgender bathrooms. Yep. That's um, exactly what we're experiencing, right? And we are being distracted. We are being turned. We're being manipulated by all sorts of paid off media. And we are being like the matador um, managing the bull, right? And killing the bull with his sword as, while the bull's charging him. We are allowing ourselves to be manipulated in this way as a society, not personally. Voice of Europe says Italian senator sparks controversy by stating motherhood should be a woman's primary goal. That used to be common sense. If you were 25 and you hadn't like nailed down a man, that used to be spinster territory, right? People would be warning you about having too many cats. I saw a woman with a, a sleeve tattoo. This was this morning. And I like, maybe I should go get it because it's kind of funny. But she had a sleeve tattoo all with paw, paw prints. And it, and it was all like her dead cats, right? Her dead cat children. And somebody said, well, who keeps giving her cats? Who keeps giving this woman cats? <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Motherhood is fulfilling. Motherhood is fulfilling to the mother. It, it serves her needs for a very long time. And like you think that in the short term, the baby consumes a lot of, you know, the mother's excess bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera. But over the long term, like if, if, you, if you look at the first two years, yeah, okay, the mother is giving a lot to the baby. But if you go 15 years, then, I mean, the mother's still probably giving a lot to the, to the child. But the child gives a lot back too in, in a whole bunch of different things that are intangibles, difficult to explain on this show, not exactly what this show's about. But then as time goes on, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, the, 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 the payback is 
unmeasurable. It's priceless. It's unbelievable. You can't even, you can't measure it. And so the, we have been sold this idea that children cost, right? And people should be allowed to uh, self-actualize without, without uh, the burden of a child. And in saying this, that, that motherhood should be a woman's primary goal, uh, this is underlining that motherhood pays off in spades. And, and not just for the woman, but for uh, the partner that has the, is the father of the baby, right? And, and it pays off. It pays off so much. And people don't understand it. And it's not, it's not communicated very well at all, at all, at all. And people don't talk about it. And um, sure, kids can be maddening, but our relationships are purposely set at opposition. Like if you look at pop culture, uh, parents versus kids is something that's quite often... Um, a trope in, in lots of television shows and people model those television shows. And then in, in music that people listen to, people are disaffected in relationships. They don't like their current boyfriend. There's always that new, better girlfriend around the corner. Uh, you know, I lost, lost the girlfriend or boyfriend, but got found someone way better. And there's this push for you're not, you, you don't have that perfect love, that thing that you've been, you know, looking for or whatever. And then people go on this journey that ultimately ends up fruitless. Whereas if you focus on what you've got and fix it to make it what you want, negotiate with life, dance with life a little bit, then that's a lot better than blowing it all up. Now, I mean, are there situations where you need to blow it all up? Maybe, right? I'm not arguing against that necessarily. But fundamentally, I'm saying that if you are having musics musicians and all sorts of other influences telling you that your relationship isn't great um, and then you make this change and it can be very costly right and it takes all of those benefits that i was talking about with children and all the rest of it and family and, and all the rest of it and it minimizes that it, it kind of smashes it into a million pieces as well because now it's very difficult to well it's difficult it just makes it more difficult much more difficult anyway back to this parental rights and variations of the term can be found in 90 pieces of Canadian legislation legislation, and have been mentioned in 25,000 court decisions. So this is just um, the New Brunswick Premier Higgs saying gender policy in schools, and he won't back down, uh, says it's an election winner. And so I think that he's correct, but it's this is part of the culture war as well. And this woman is just talking for a minute about what happens with resources in left-leaning regimes, communist regimes. Okay, here we go. And this is up the alley of children. And they're, they're going after limited resources. They're targeting, well, they're directly killing people with MAID, but they're going after children to reduce the, the burden on the system. And that, in a system that's got limited resources, like our tax-paid health system, that's beneficial, right? So they're getting rid of people but that's what they always do. Here we go. What are going to do when you say that the world's going to end in 10 years and the world is overpopulated, so to solve the problem, we can't be having as many kids. Just seeing the way that they connect all these issues in their minds makes me really worried because in communist China, they literally forced abortions onto anybody yep. who had more than one child. Yep. Then they forced sterilized all the women that dared to get pregnant. So women were secretly having their kids and then keeping the kids in little tents and, and barns in the countryside. So this is not us like freaking out and creating some hypothesis of what could happen. Uh, this is actually what leftist regimes do, right. especially when they start running out of resources. We now have the Biden food shortage coming, and this is a classic step after leftist policies destroy a country. After they had the famine in China, they had no resources, and it resulted in the one-child policy. So this is disturbing. Leftism is evil. It's satanic. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised at all that now they're saying don't have kids. Right. So it's just interesting, right? The idea of a food shortage, I hope that's wrong. Fingers crossed. In a food shortage, the chocolate cereal goes first. I'll tell you that. So I don't want that to happen. Um, here's Brian Lilly. I reported on this when this came out in November. So this, Dr. Jacobs shared this in November about this governing body wanting to prioritize DEI, woke social justice things over medical competency. And I thought, that's a terrible idea. And I reported on it then. The reason Brian Lilly is reporting on it now is because it's the week between Christmas and New Year's and nobody talks politics. Well, some people talk politics, but nobody's really interested in politics when they don't have to be, right? And they don't have to be if it's Christmas and all the rest.
So Brian Lilly is waiting for, for the time when nobody's paying attention to tweet things like this. He says, if, if it weren't a direct quote from an official report, I wouldn't believe this. Activist doctors want to make social justice issues more important for the training of doctors than medical expertise. Yeah. So social justice issues, that's the big win, right? You want to make sure that your doctor is woke enough, right? Are you woke enough to be my doctor? Cam Hughes says the head of European, the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. We now have a European Green Deal as a centerpiece of our economy and unmatched in ambition. We've set the path for digital transition to become global pioneers in online rights. We have set the building blocks for a health union helping to vaccinate an entire continent and large parts of the world. So this is her little speech talking about all the successes and looking forward. And uh, well, I mean, these people frame what they're doing as great leaps forward and getting lots of good things done. But it seems the Green Deal, I mean, Biden's Green New Deal was widely panned as terrible. Canada's green transition's not happening. It's just not happening. It's And it's a boondoggle. Everything they do is a boondoggle, expensive, and it doesn't actually work. So, I mean, the, the electric buses in Calgary, electric buses in Guelph were uh, towed away too, right? Like hilariously. So, these guys are masterful. They're so good at taking a very, very bad record and making it sound glowing and wonderful. Oh, green, we're making so many green strides. Anyway, here's Ursula van der Leyen talking about 2023 and all the stuff that they've done. We now have, now have a European Green Deal as a centerpiece of our economy and unmatched in ambition. We have set the path for digital transition to become global pioneers in online rights. We have the historic next generation EU, combining 800 billion euros of investment and reform and creating decent jobs for today and tomorrow. We have set the building blocks for a health union, helping to vaccinate an entire continent and large parts of the world. We now have, now have a European Green Deal. So that's that. Um, one of the things that I, always kind of makes me raise my eyebrows a little bit is the results of that vaccination push are, are very clear and people are talking about it. And it seems like nobody is in official positions. And Tucker Carlson's talked about this, the consequences of admitting fault, saying they're sorry or... Ad, ad, Acknowledging it at all, um, admitting it at all, at all would be catastrophic for them <laughs> because if they admit it, then, well, the, the, the size of it is too big, right? Um, so it would, be, it would be overwhelming maybe. Um, so they can't admit it, right? Anyway, moving on, Street Politics is reporting Trudeau's funneled $840,000 to Gail Bowe's organ, old organization. And it says the Trudeau government finds itself embroiled in controversy yet again over allegations of misusing taxpayer funds to benefit allied interests. The latest case centers on a series of questionable grants to the environmental group Equitaire, an organization with close ties to Liberal Cabinet Minister Stephen Gilbo. This incident is part of a pattern of accusations that public money has improperly flowed to third-party groups whose agendas align with and amplify liberal policies. The Cozy Agreement allows the government to effectively outsource promotion of its agenda by funding sympathetic organizations like Equitaire. So that's exactly what's happening. And this is another, you know, almost million dollar boondoggle, spending boondoggle, um, directly to Trudeau and funding green lies, essentially green policies that are misleading. And is anything going to happen? <sighs> Probably not. <laughs> we haven't seen it happen, anything happen before. So yikes. Robert Fife is reporting Canada urged to consider lifetime ban on cigarette sales to anyone born after 2008. New Zealand's doing the same thing. I think it, if you want to smoke cigarettes, that's up to you. And you should not be, um, and, and even if you were born before 2008, you should have the choice to smoke cigarettes if you want to. Um, because the idea of just not having that product for sale and we're morally superior, taking people's choices away is not a morally superior stance. Um, anyway, Terry says, from the government that legalized marijuana and decriminalized opium, right? Have your fentanyl, but don't you smoke those cigarettes that cost, do you know how much the cigarettes cost healthcare, uh, the, the healthcare system by itself? Opiates kill fast, right? Cigarettes kill slow. Super, super expensive. Marijuana doesn't kill at all, as far as I understand it. I, if you 
eat it, right? But if you, like marijuana itself, I th possibly smoking it could have uh, consequences. But I don't know that s smoking marijuana is as bad as smoking cigarettes. I think cigarettes are much worse by orders of magnitude, but maybe the numbers are just lower. I don't know. Okay. The Globe and Mail says Canada's Navy doesn't just have a recruitment crisis. It also has a retention problem. Yeah. Yes, obviously. They've gone very, very woke. They're promoting people for being woke. And it, it's not surprising at all that people don't want to stay in the Navy and people are not wanting to join it. And that's a true across all Canadian forces, not just the Navy. Here is uh, something that's kind of funny. Miss Chandler Bong says, new, is laughing at this and, oh, Canada is sharing this. New Zealand, hey, Canada, can I copy your homework? Canada, sure, just don't make it too obvious. And it is almost a carbon copy of the Canadian $20 bill in New Zealand. So like the New Zealand $20 bill, I would say you could get away with passing that around in Canada. People wouldn't question it much. They'd be like, oh, is this a new one? Except for the giant New Zealand in the top of the New Zealand bill. <laughs> Other than that, very, very Canadian. I, I guess Canada's got a big Canada right in the top there, doesn't it? But still, still very similar. Kind of funny. Here is, oh, what's this? Here's Jagmeet Singh. Jagmeet Singh. 14 hours ago, there's an election coming, right? They're bubbling up with this election talk all of, all of a sudden. And CTV News is reporting, Jagmeet Singh rules out coalition government with the liberals after next election. And I said yesterday, I'm pretty sure we're not in a coalition government now. There's There was never a formal agreement. It's more of a handshake agreement at this point in time. And then back before the 2021 election, you can see November 9th, 2021, a firm no for me, Jagmeet Singh slams the door on the idea of a liberal NDP coalition. So uh, Carlos says, this is ridiculous. He said that last time and then pulled the confidence and, su and supply scam on us. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, nope. I wouldn't believe a word Jagmeet Singh says. <laughs> Christian Freeland says, I spent some time at the Good Shepherd TO with some of the amazing volunteers who are serving our community this holiday season. Thank you for all of your hard work, she says. And Bill says, another photo op in an attempt to lift their disastrous numbers in the polls. I don't know that this is going to help your poll numbers. <laughs> Baba Freeland, right? Big smile. Uh, a mild cackle. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to CanadaPoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.